welcome back to the Traveling Epicurean. Today we're going to be in my kitchen and I'm going to share with you one of my very favorite recipes for New England clam chowder. It's creamy, bursting with clam flavor, lots of clams, potatoes, a little bit of smoky from the bacon. You're going to love this recipe and I also have a couple of secret ingredients. Come on over here and I'll show you what we're going to need to get this going. So this is what we're going to need to make our amazing New England clam chowder. I have Snow's clams. I love these clams. I've been using them for over 20 years. The quality is always the same. Absolutely delicious. We are going to use one large Vidalia onion, a sweet white onion that I grate. I also grate two stalks of celery. I have three slices of bacon that I finely diced. We have five medium Yukon potatoes because they're nice and creamy and a medium starch. We have some rosemary. I have five bottles of clam broth. This broth is from the six cans of clams that I opened and that's how beautiful they are right there. I have some cream sherry right here and we're gonna need butter and of course a little bit of Tabasco and some oyster crackers. And last but not least, the heavy whipping cream. We're gonna use three cups of that. Look how gorgeous these canned clams are. They're absolutely beautiful. So I did chopped clams and then I did one minced. This is a minced and look how beautiful those are as well. So this is what it looks like when I open the can and then I just pour out the juice just like that because we don't want to put the clams in right away. We want to put them in at the last possible moment. Just like that. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's see how that bacon's doing. So I'm going to put in all of the chopped bacon. You know, I really don't want this to be too crispy. I just want it to be golden. And, um, and then we're going to add in our onions and our celery and we're going to glaze a little bit with some dry cream sherry. Um, I love sherry and chowder. That's pretty much my main secret ingredient. It makes the most amazing flavor. So I have this on a low heat and we're just gonna get this golden. All right, look at that. That's coming along really nicely. You see, there's not a lot of bacon fat rendered out of this. I use a good bacon. And, you know, I don't want this chowder to be about bacon fat. Um, just a little bit. I'm going to even add a little piece of butter in here to bring this along. It smells so delicious. It's just that hint of smoke. Now I'm going to add in the onions and the celery. Get the celery in there. And now I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. And that bacon is going to kind of melt right into the chowder. It's going to be a really subtle, wonderful flavor. It smells incredible already. All right, let's turn up the heat a little bit and get this going. I'm two more tablespoons of butter to keep those vegetables soft. And all these vegetables are just going to melt into the chowder and make wonderful, wonderful base flavor. Well, that's looking really nice. I have it on a medium-low once it got started sautéing because I really don't want too much caramelization on those vegetables because I really want them to melt into the chowder. I look at this like my, um, my crab cakes that I make. No nonsense, no fillers. I don't want corn in here, peppers, carrots. I just want potatoes and clams. And then we're going to add some rosemary, which we're going to tie off. I just want, again, another layer of flavor from the rosemary. And it's very subtle, and it's absolutely delicious. Wait till you see how nice that's going to be. I like the Yukon, though, because it's a medium starch, and it holds its shape. I find that the russets really just melt away into the soup, and then you have no potatoes left. So this is a nice potato to use. And it's pretty, too. So we have all the potatoes all done. You want them about the same size. This way they cook evenly. And uh, our next step, I like to take a quarter cup of the sherry that we're going to glaze the vegetables with, and I swish it around in the clams. 
and then I throw each one out as I as I swish the sherry around because there's a lot of flavor in the bottom of that can. So we don't want to waste all that clam broth. Um, this is a great go-to recipe and you can make this anytime you want. I always have canned clams in my cabinet for linguine clam sauce or a chowder like this. So now I have a little bit of concentration of that clam broth in here with the sherry and I'm gonna deglaze these vegetables. All right, oh my goodness. That smells amazing. Oh, it smells incredible. So now I'm gonna add all the potatoes and I'm gonna add the clam broth from the cans and all the clam broth from all the five bottles that we had as well. Make sure you shake it because there's a lot of flavor, a little bit of sediment that, that uh, falls to the bottom. So you want to make sure to get all that delicious flavor. And then we're going to bring this to a simmer and we're going to simmer it until those potatoes are tender and then we'll add the cream. I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. You're really going to love it. And I have these special bay leaves that my mother gave me and I'm going to put those in there, just two. And bay leaves really do something for clam chowder. So that's all we need there. Let's bundle up this rosemary with some string here. I like my chowder very basic, but with tons of flavor. And that's what this New England clam chowder recipe is. It's packed with flavor. I think I had my favorite um, chowder. It was a, a Quahog chowder up at the Cape. Oh my gosh. The look of it was very simple, not a lot of greens, but the flavor was just bursting. So that's kind of like I try and emulate that soup, you know, when you have a favorite and you come home and you try and, and match something that you had when you're out. All right, so here's our bundle. And I'm even gonna take off that top because I don't want those leaves falling into the chowder. And we'll put that in a couple of minutes along with this, this sherry. So in one of my last shows, um, it's called Amontillado Sherry. It's a Spanish dry sherry. Chef Mark made that with his layered uh, torta de pollo. Oh my goodness, it was really amazing. And so that's what I'm keeping in my cabinet now. And we're gonna flavor our chowder with that sherry. I'm gonna add a half a cup more of that sherry. I really love that sherry flavor. And the alcohol is gonna burn off a little bit and then I'm gonna put in the rosemary. That's gonna be really, really nice. I love that flavor of that sherry. In fact, so if you have this just for adults, you can add a little splash of the sherry at the end after you've added the cream and the clams. What this is here is the chowder base. And it's best actually if you make this the day before, um, you're gonna see me add all the ingredients eventually. And then, um, I'm gonna cool it and then I'm gonna put it into the refrigerator and I'm taking it to a neighborhood party tomorrow and that's when it's gonna be the best. When I reheat it, not gonna bring it back up to a boil though, ever, because the cream will break and the clams will get tough. We're just gonna warm it through and it's gonna be really delicious. I can't wait to bring it to the party tomorrow. And the rosemary is being infused into that stock, that base. And then I took out a potato just to show you See, it's really, I'd say, hmm, almost ready. So I'm gonna turn it way low. I'm gonna add the cream in there. I'm gonna add three cups of cream, and then I'm gonna bring that back up again. And I like the cream to actually simmer in there a little bit because that's gonna get a little bit thick. I don't add any roux to my, my chowder. All right, so we're gonna add this lovely heavy cream. Now when you go to warm it through the next day, make sure you take out this before you warm it through. Because that rosemary bundle is really, all the leaves are gonna start falling off of it. And take out the, um, the bay leaves as well. 
That looks really nice though. Okay, so my other secret ingredient is Wondra flour. This is amazing. It is a quick dissolving flour. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the chowder, just like that, and then I'm just gonna stir like this. You don't need to do any roux in the beginning, and this thickens it just enough, and it's not even pasty, and then I can keep simmering just for like maybe one or two more minutes. And that's it. Is that beautiful? You can use that Wondra for anything at any point in time. When you're making soup or gravy or stew, you just sprinkle it on and it immediately dissolves into your sauce. I'm gonna take it off the heat though immediately. Otherwise, those potatoes are gonna disappear. So it looks amazing. I did add one more teaspoon of that pink Himalayan salt. I'm not even putting the clams in the soup when it's on the heat. I don't want these clams to cook. They're already cooked. So we're gonna add them now. Wow, so look at this chowder. Isn't this beautiful? Really nice. The potatoes are still intact. I didn't totally kill them by heating them away. I don't wanna to stir too much because those rosemary leaves will start falling off of that stock there. But um, I just wanted to show you how pretty this is. I love some broth that's really delicious. So I'm going to make a plate here of this chowder. Wow, that's so yummy. I have my Tabasco because I do love Tabasco in my chowder. I'm a big Sriracha fan, but there's something about Tabasco and chowder. It just goes together so well. Here we go. Try this. Oh my goodness. That's really, really good. You're gonna love this incredible chowder. And if you waited till tomorrow, the flavors become even more intense and um, it just gets better and better. And then of course it won't be there on the third day because you're gonna eat it all tomorrow anyways. <laughs> and the best thing about this chowder is you can make it all year round. I can't wait for you to go try this. Remember, you can find it at the traveling epicurean.com. Have a really great day. Ciao! All those other ingredients to be the underlying flavors that are going to fill this bursting something or other. <laughs> and uh, this is the soup that I have. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.